Hello and welcome. In this video, I'd like to take a couple seconds and invite you to attend our excellent active defense training that we'll be having at Black Hat USA 2014 in Mandalay Bay, August 2nd through the 7th, 2014, as I said, in Las Vegas. Uh, we got a quick overview. If you just do a Google search for Black Hat Training 2014, uh, it'll take you to the Black Hat website right here. And I want to take a couple minutes and kind of explain why the class was put together, what it is we're looking at, what it is our goals and objectives are in the class, and what you get out of the class as well. The first thing I'd like to show you just quickly, is the Verizon data breach report from 2014. If you get a chance, please download this report. If you just Google Verizon data breach report 2014, it should take up. And, and the big thing that I want you guys to notice is just how incredibly ineffective so many of our security controls actually are. If you do a search for top five discovery, I just did a search in this document, top five discovery in the Verizon data breach report. It's going to take you to these funny little graphs that you have all over the place. Like this one says figure 28, top five discovery methods for ideologically motivated incidents within web application attacks. And it says total external detection was 98%, total internal detection was 2%. It says external unrelated party was 93%. External fraud detection was 4%. And then it's like law enforcement is 1%. Internal, you know, reported by a user was 1% or less than 1%. If you look a little bit further inside of this document, there's some other cases. Uh, point of sale intrusions, internal network intrusion detection, that was picked up by less than 1%. We also have internal detection for, uh, oops, for web attacks we have there we go and point of sale intrusion now the the thing that this particular report doesn't tell you as well as the 2013 report did is the full breakout of all of the internal detection technologies this graph the green one that i have up the figure 44 discovery methods talks about how breaches were detected all right so once again the numbers are huge for external parties unrelated party fraud detection customer law enforcement actor disclosure are huge numbers but once you get past those you get into things like unknown, 5%. I don't even know what that means. It's like organizations have no idea how they got breached. It's just, ah, we just kind of fell into it. And then we have internal reported by a user, financial audit internal, that's 4% and 3% respectively. And then we get into network intrusion detection, log review, fraud detection, host base intrusion detection, incident response, and IT audit. All of those are 1%. What this basically is telling me, and what you should be taking from this as well, is that traditional detection methods are failing. And this isn't just me being Pollyanna saying, um, you know, that everything is horrible or Chicken Little saying the sky is falling. It is empirical. If you look at the Verizon data breach report and you also look at the M Trends report from Mandy, you're going to see the exact same type of trends and analysis. It's showing us that the security technologies that we continue to purchase, that we continue to buy, are continuing to fail us. Why? Why exactly is it that these technologies are continuing to fail us? And why exactly do we go through all the effort of creating this class called active defense, offensive countermeasures and hacking back? Well, what this has to do with is the fact that our traditional security technologies that we have are known. Our technologies that we have and the ones that we have in place are in fact known to the attackers. They are known and they are understood by the attackers. For example, sit and spend a couple of seconds and I want you to think of three major AV vendors. I want you to think of three large AV vendors. You'd have like McAfee, Symantec, and then whoever else you can come up with off the top of your head. Those are huge and that makes up a massive amount of the market share. If you look at firewalls, what are some of the firewall vendors you can think of? Well, you'd have, you know, Checkpoint, you'd have Palo Alto, of course. You'd have these big vendors and of course Cisco would be in that bucket as well. And the point is, if you look at these security technologies, they are known to the attackers. They are a known quantity. Before they even try to break into your network, try to attack your computer systems, they know exactly what they're up against. And that means that they can prepare for those attacks before they even launch the attack. That means that the determination as to whether or not they're going to be successful breaking into your networks or not is a foregone conclusion because your security technologies are well known the attackers. So this class, the goal of active defense, offensive countermeasures, and hacking back is quite simply to inject a little bit of uncertainty into the world of the attackers. It's a four-day class dedicated to non-standard defensive tactics. We'll talk about things like annoying the attackers, creating things like honey ports, 
and I've got it right here. This is our handy dandy active defense harbinger distribution, as you can see with this fine logo that we have in the background. Every single student get a copy of this DARPA funded project, the active defense harbinger distribution. And on the active defense harbinger distribution is a whole huge collection of different tools that are dedicated for active defense, where we'll come up with ways to attack, or excuse me, annoy the attackers. How can we greatly increase or obfuscate their ability to successfully identify what technologies you have in place. We'll talk about honey ports in class. We'll talk about DNS servers from hell. We'll talk about infinitely recursive web servers from hell. We'll talk about infinitely recursive file system directories. We'll talk about all kinds of ways to greatly increase the amount of work effort that a bad guy has to go through in order to successfully attack one's network. Also, labs. Labs are all over this class. In fact, something like five, six labs a day. Um, all of our labs are actually built into the Active Defense Harbinger distribution. You're going to get a, a printout book that'll have the slides for the class, use case scenario. How do you implement Active Defense in your enterprise? How do you actually implement it locally if you want to play around with it? And a full usage document. We have all the usage for all the different tools right here, tons and tons of hands-on labs. All kinds of new tools have been added to this class. Um, just great, great, great things. So for annoyance, we're going to have a lot of labs on annoyance. Then we're going to talk about attribution. How can you get full attribution against a bad guy, finding out where they are? What's their IP address? What's their latitude and longitude? They're attacking you through Tor? Great. What can we do to try to identify where they're at and deobfuscate where their IP addresses are associated with using Tor? Once we found their location, here's a great tool. This is Pushpin. If I know exactly where the attacker is, I can drop Pushpin generate a map and it can tell me all of the tweets all of the different YouTube videos all the Picasso pictures from that area maybe just maybe we'll be able to identify what the attacker is doing we'll teach you how to set up an, an attribution network so that you don't have angry attackers coming to your house how do you protect yourself how do you get non-attrib credit cards how do you set up the server in the cloud so it's not attributable back to your corporation so you can find out more and more so attribution is huge. And then finally, at the end of this course, the last part of this course, we will talk about attack. How can you effectively attack the attackers, get access to their systems with full permission and warrants and working with law enforcement in place? How can you do all this stuff legally? We'll give you ammunition that you can talk to your legal representation at your company, talk to your management so you can start implementing active defense with, without actually getting too terribly bent out of shape about breaking a whole bunch of laws. We'll introduce you to a whole bunch of case studies and legal uh, rulings that support the idea of active defense. It's all there. And we will give you a free copy of the book, Active Defense, The Art of Offensive Countermeasures. And we might even throw a t-shirt into the mix as well. So if you get a chance, please go check out the Black Hat class. Um, once again, submitted humbly for your approval. It'll be 2nd through 7th, 2014 in Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas at Black Hat. And as I said, the whole reason why this class exists, folks, is because traditional security technologies are failing us. The things that you did last year did not work last year. They didn't work the year before. They will not work this year. And they sure won't work next year. So this class is all about non-standard defensive tactics that the bad guys will never, never expect. And more importantly, we're going to give it to you so you can do it legally without going to jail. So please check it out. I can't wait to see you there. Paul's going to be there as well. Um, come up. Give us hugs, and uh, we're happy to see you guys the 2nd through the 5th in Vegas. Take care, everybody.